Welcome to James the Bike Guy, where today we're checking out an incredibly impressive electric mountain bike. A mountain bike that rocks 150 millimeters of front suspension travel, 140 millimeters of rear, and has geometry that should make it super playful for just about any condition. We're checking out the Giant Trance X Advanced E Plus 2. And while that's a mouthful, so is the power and handling of this carbon fiber EMTB. And in this video, we're gonna check out the specs and features. We're gonna go take it for a trail ride on some of my favorite trails. And then finally, we'll close it out with exactly what it weighs. So if this kind of thing is interesting to you, be sure to hit that subscribe button and let's check out this bike together. The Giant Trans X series is very well known for their all mountain prowess. Now the Trans X is in their standard analog mountain bike lineup as well. And it's the one that would compete against things like the Specialized Stump Jumper, as well as the Trek Fuel EX. And here in the EMTB version, they've taken some of the tech and handling that comes from the analog bike, but strapped in a motor and a large battery to be able to help with long range rides, assist the rider as needed, and certainly have additional power to get up climbs. Now, this Trans X is available in both an aluminum or a carbon version. And as you can see here, we've got Giant's carbon fiber frame. Now, this is their advanced grade composite. And when you're looking at these bikes, the number is gonna indicate the parts quality. And then if it says advanced, that means it's gonna have the carbon fiber frame. And before we dive into the parts on this bike, let's talk a bit about geometry. So this has 150 millimeter front suspension and it's gonna rock a 65.8 degree head tube angle in the low position and a 66.5 degree in a high. And then the seat tube angle is gonna be 76 degrees in low and 76.7 in high. And then you've got a pretty short chain stay of 472 millimeters. Now, if you compare that to some of the analog bikes, it's not gonna feel as short as it could be. But essentially with the motor system, that's pretty solid as well as this having the Maestro suspension link where you've got a virtual link pivot up here, it's a pretty tight package. Now, when I say Maestro suspension, that means that we've got this bar link just above where your bottom bracket is, goes back to a solid carbon rear triangle with a rocker link driving down on this Fox shock. Now, this is a standard metric shock, although it does run a trunnion mount up top allowing for 140 millimeters of progressive suspension travel out back to go along with a carbon frame. Now you heard me say the high and low position, and that's because right here there's a minnow link with an adjustment that you can flip this ovalized pivot around and it's going to lengthen or shorten the effective chain stay length. And that then pitches the front end of the bike. Now, a few things to mention about Geo. We did say it's got a super steep seat tube angle. It's 76.7 degrees. Well, while I was out on the trail, I did notice that I felt like the reach was just a little bit short. And as you rotate that seat tube angle forward, it increases the climbing capability when that rotates forward. Now, this bike in a size medium, which was the tester size that I used, came in at a reach of 18 inches. Otherwise, the geometry felt really spot on for New England punchy climbs and rocky descents, and was definitely a playful character to have out on the trail. Diving into some of the parts on the bike, we'll start with this fork. So this is 150 millimeter suspension travel, Fox 36 Performance. So 36 Performance means it's coming with the fit grip damper, which is gonna have nice adjustment with detents from firm to all the way open. 36 millimeter beefcake stanchions to keep everything nice and stiff. You do have a mount for fender on here. And then on the non-drive side, you'll see it comes with a spot to be able to adjust air pressure based on your riding style, as well as be able to run different air tokens in there to dial in the, the feel. Now on the back, the rear shock is gonna be the Fox Float DPS. The DPS has the Evolve air canister, and this happens to be an EMTB tuned shock. So it's gonna help with all the power and the additional weight of this bike running through the rear end. Now powering the bike aside from the rider's legs is gonna be Giant's Sync Drive Pro Motor. This is a motor that's developed by Yamaha along with Giant and it has 85 Newton meters of power. And then the battery system that's on the bike is going to be a 625 watt hour battery. Now this battery goes into the down tube 
and it's a nice slick integration with the bike and something i really like is the way that they're doing the controllers on the new bike here where it's actually all done right on the top tube so as you can see here on the right hand side this is showing us how much power is there and then on our handlebar we're going to have an up and a down button for adjusting the amount of power and so as we go up you can see it's going to add different levels of bars but not just bars that you'd have to read while you're riding down the trail it does change the color so you can look down and easily know what setting you're in and just adjust it on the fly with this two button controller now getting that power through the ground is going to be a shimano slx 1x12 drivetrain so this rocks a single ring up front a praxis 36 tooth chain ring and then out back you've got the Shimano SLX rear derailleur, which has a clutch, so you can adjust uh, the tension on the back end, helping keep everything nice and quiet. If you flip the clutch off, you'll see that now the, uh, the chain can move around quite a bit more. And that drives through a 10 to 51 tooth 12 speed rear cassette. Now this 10 to 51 tooth cassette effectively means you have 510% range giving plenty of addition along with the extra power to get up some climbs. And slowing down on descents is going to be courtesy of some Shimano brakes. These are the Deor M420 brake. This 420 brake is a hydraulic mineral oil brake operating four piston calipers both on the front as well as the rear. Connecting the bike to the trail is courtesy of some Maxxis tires with the Asagai 29 by 2.6 inch tire up front. This is their Exo Protection Max Terra tire, super durable and very aggressive tire. And then in back is the Dissector 29 by 2.6. So these nice 2.6 inch tires have huge width both on the front and the rear. And what I really like is they're laced up using some tubeless ready giant AM29 rims. These are 30 millimeters wide, 29 inch diameter of course, but it has Shimano hubs both in the front and the rear for increased durability and reliability. So riding the bike out on the trail, I went to a local trail network called Vietnam down in Milford, Mass, which is one of my favorite places to ride and it offers a wide variety of rocky features, some jump trails, as well as some nice cross country paths to go through. And a few things to mention here. So one of the things that I really like about how this bike handles and rides is actually the motor system. So going through the motor system is real quick to get going. It's a pretty natural feel as it gets going. That 85 Newton meters of torque does feel very strong compared to most of the other EMTBs that I've ridden. It's certainly stronger than the Shimano Step system uh, by my, uh, my pedaling feel, as well as the Bosch system, but maybe just slightly less powerful than the Brose setup you get on the full power Levo. <laughs> Aside from that, when you get off the pedals, there's only a momentary delay before the motor shuts off and it feels awesome. Now out on my ride, we only use through about half of the 625 watt hour battery. Enough. So plenty of range there and nothing to worry about. One more now time. coming through some technical stuff, a couple of things to mention when you have that extra power, you do just have to be a little careful not to overshoot the front end of the bike because it can pull wide just a little bit. Uh, because you're going to push through with that additional power. But descending, this bike is just an absolute sled. Going down the trail, you can really feel where the suspension, that Maestro setup in the back, as well as the slack head tube angle, is really helping this bike just slam through, especially with the additional weight. Now getting up things, this is just where these bikes are just hilarious. And I say hilarious because it allows you to do things you really just shouldn't be allowed to. So getting up this rock face here, you can see, uh, I mean, it's tough to say, but it's super, super steep. And you can see the bike just goes straight up without an issue. There's another section, which is a real technical climb that I've actually never made on an analog bike, that this bike just went right through and just point the front wheel and it made it through almost telepathically. Now there are two things that I wish was a bit different. I spoke about it a bit in the geometry section, but the seat tube angle being so steep and the reach being relatively short for that type of seat tube angle really made the bike feel a little bit cramped in the size medium. This could certainly be adjusted by going to a larger size frame, although then you'd have some trouble with standover. But it's one thing to keep in mind when you're feeling the bike. The other piece is this is certainly on the heavier side of this class of EMTB, even in the carbon frame. And you can feel that weight when you're trying to shuffle the bike through some tight sections where you're really having to wrench on the front end of the bike to get the front wheel to move around. The short chain stays that are on it 
do a great job to help with how that feels, but you just can't get away from the additional weight of the bike. And closing out how this bike rides on the trail, this has been one of my favorite EMTVs to have out on the trails. I really enjoyed the way that it handled through. It's one of the closest to a true mountain bike feel in the full power EMTV space, and it was an absolute treat on my ride. The actual weight of the giant Trans Advanced is gonna come in and weigh. Fifty two point three four pounds. Well, thanks for watching this video on the Giant Trans X Advanced E plus two. Well, it might be a mouthful. It's one heck of a bike out on the trail. I'd love to know your thoughts about this bike, how it handled when it was out on the trail, as well as would you see yourself going to an EMTB? Well, anyways, leave those comments down in the comment section below. Let me know what you think and can't wait to see you out on the trail.